guys, this is getting very cool. We're very close to creating a game of life. If you want to have a look at the rules, I won't go through them too much. Follow the link to number file. That is where I found out how to make this, so I'll quote them and follow the link. So now we simply need to make some more parameters for our objects, being these blocks. So these blocks are either dead or alive, so let's initiate them as dead first, and we can turn them to alive. In this case, we want to record how many neighbors they have. So let's record the neighbors and we record if they're going to die or be born. The reason why we need to record if they're dead and if they're dying or being born is because we need to check how many neighbours they have, whether they need to be born, and then make them alive at the same time so that what happens to one block doesn't affect the ones next to them except for each tick, so we can get a tick rate. So now to do that we need to import time. So now one thing to remember is, very importantly, it's because we have extra parameters to this list. This is going to be accessed by 0, dead by 1, neighbours by 2, and die by 3. A lot of people might prefer to use a dictionary in this case, but I just like dealing with lists and um, remembering where we append the items from. If it did get much more complicated, I probably would use a dictionary, but in this case I think a list is good as an object. So now we've imported time, we've got our blocks ready, and we simply need to check the parameters using this index. So for each item, we are pending the list of the items next to it, so we can access it using not zero, but four, and we can remember that. So now here we've got the list appended, and now here we simply make while true. We have an infinite statement, but we'll get this dependent on a tick rate, so we'll simply make if time dot clock is greater than ticker and now we simply initiate a ticker so what we'll do we'll make fps the frames per second equal to say let's only have one frame per second at the start we'll make tick rate equal to one divided by frames per second and we'll initialize over here something that gets updated we can make ticker equal to tick rate. So we're going to alter our frames per second. We are not going to alter these and we are not going to alter these. So these are our initial variables that we can play with. So now we've got a ticker we need to update and we've got a tick rate we can use for the time clock. So now we've got a ticker there and down here we'll simply go ticker plus or equal to tick rate. So every time the time clock is greater than ticker we can add to the ticker and stop running the loop. And now what we want to do is when we click our blocks here, these initial blocks we want to set to alive. So these can be the only blocks that are alive initially. I realised that we need some alive to be dealt with, so let's just quickly deal with that here. So now if we put index in here, and we want to change the value of dead now to alive, the ones that are colored, we need to put one in here because we are indexing the second value. We are making this equal to the string alive. So now we can check for the string alive inside of it. And now let's change this color here so that it matches a bit better to what we expect. Let's try 125, 125, and 20. Let's just actually make this a bit higher, 200. So now down here, so now every time this is true, we need to access every object in the list. So we go for index in range from zero to length of the blocks. It's the safest way to access by index using the range from zero to length of the blocks. At least I think, and that's what I like to do. Then we go for check in the blocks and we're using this index we're accessing it one at a time and we're going to get every check from the checks we have put inside the value of the index 4 because we've appended it to here the fourth item and now we're going to simply check if the block using the same block so we're going to index again and we're going to check if it's alive so if it is alive So we are checking if it's alive, and if it's alive, 
we are simply going to add to the amount of neighbors it has. So every time it has a live neighbor, we'll simply add one to the neighbors. So now let's actually, we need to initiate that first. Let's go neighbors equals zero. And now here to access neighbors and add one to it, we can simply go blocks. Getting the block, we're simply indexing and it's the second, and it's the third item. So zero, one, two, using two, we're gonna go plus or equal to one. So in each case, we have neighbors being stored to zero and we're gonna plus one to it. So now for each block, inside this range we now have stored inside the neighbors how many alive neighbors there are so the way this game works if it is dead and has three neighbors that are alive it will become born and next time we run this it will be alive and drawn if it is alive and it has two or three neighbors it will stay alive everything else it will be dead so now let's simply check for those evaluations so we're almost there. So using the same for loop, we'll go inside of here. Since we have now got the neighbors, if the blocks, and we're indexing the neighbors. So we're still indexing. And we're going with one. And we want to know first if this block is alive. So if this block itself is alive, and it has two or three neighbors, we'll run this code first. So if blocks index, and now we're getting its neighbors. So if it's alive and it's got more than one neighbor, so it's got two, and blocks index two is less than four. So if these blocks is alive and it has two or three neighbors, we can keep it alive. So we'll make it born, because this simply means it'll stay alive. And if this is not true, the only other thing it could be is die. And now simply we check for the other current. So now we're checking for if the block is alive and it has this many neighbors. Now we need to check if it's dead. So if the blocks index one is equal to dead then if blocks let's just copy and paste what am I doing typing this all the time we we'll only want if the neighbors are exactly three then it's going to be born what am I doing copying and pasting On my else statement, almost there guys, very close. We just need to copy the death. So the other only, only other occurrence is that it dies. And now we simply need to update it with what happens here after it does all of its checks. So we need another for loop because we don't want these changes to be affected before we do these calculations. So now let's make another for loop. And this should be elif, that was silly. So now, <clears throat> so every time we run this, we can reset the index of the neighbors because we don't want it to affect the second time we run this tick. So let's reset this to zero here before we forget. We've got the index. See, we forget. Programmers make mistakes, though not often. For index in range. And now we're simply going to copy and paste the for loop because we're using another for loop, iterating over the range of blocks again. And now we can simply draw it if it needs to be born or kill it if it needs to die. So if blocks if it needs to be born, we're going to make it born and make it alive. If it doesn't need to be born, we're going to make it dead. So now we can make blocks index alive so then we can copy and paste that one because that's the one we want 
and we also need to set the color. So now we need to change the color. So we need to access the object itself, the, the square, and change the color of the square. And since we're going to use the same color, I haven't checked the color yet, but since we're going to use the same color, we're going to use this set fill. And let's put this outside of the wild loop, because that shouldn't be in a wild loop, that'd be silly. Because we don't need to update the random variables anymore. Put that here, and we can change this color whenever we want. Actually, let's put that here so we can change the colors and still see that. So now we've got the color being created, we're making it alive when it is born. The only other thing that could be is to become dead. So else. Dead. And we want to make it, let's just say white when it's dead. And now once we've done this, to make sure the ones that are born all get reset, we're going to reset the blocks index. So we make them all equal to die again. Now there's probably a little error somewhere, but let's just try and run this, see what happens. Syntax, there we go. There's always a syntax somewhere. F5, save, run again. There we go. We didn't put any lives in. Let's see how we go. Put about, I think six lives in is a good test. F5, save, run. One, two, three. One, two, three. Oh, I'll stay with you while I debug this so you can see my problems. I haven't defined clocks. It's not clocks. Another silly mistake. In here I've got two equals. Let's try again. Okay guys, here we go, here's a big problem. This isn't meant to be check, because we're iterating over the checks in the list. So if the checks in the index are alive, then we need to change it. I think that was it. Let's try once more. I might have to re-record this whole thing. There we go, oh, still not right. Alright guys, after about half an hour of staring at this trying to debug it, there was just a extra equal sign here in my else statement. Because it's here, yeah, I won't explain it. There was an extra one there. Get rid of this. Let's print this at yellow, or we can make it colour. Again, I think it's meant to be colour. We can define our colour as we want, any colour we want. Let's increase this to 100. F5 to save and run. Now we have the game of life. Let's test it. Bit of an ugly colour, doesn't matter. There you go, that's one test. Just give us a second, I'll open up a file. And here we are at Wikipedia, just looking at some patterns. We can try like some spaceships or oscillators. Let's see that this works properly. Let's just try this one here. So remember to change the starting lives, so we need 8 starting lives, or we'll work with 6 I think. Let's run this again, <clears throat> 3, I think this is the pattern, there we go, it looks like it's working. Remember we can change the scale, so let's do 20, let's have a bit more fun with, my partner found a really cool one, let's actually go. So if we have a look here, this is a pattern my partner found, this is a really cool one, it's an infinite spiralling pattern, so I just put that out there to start it, and this will go on forever. The game of life is great because you can create many different sorts of patterns, and more complicated things can come from very simple things, that's what I love about it. I do enjoy fractals, hence I watch Numberphile a lot. 
You can download this code or files and modules from the description below and please subscribe for updates.